Emerald City of Oz The Wizard Dorothy and her friends were back on the road in their wagon, looking for a new adventure and new characters to meet and greet. Where to next? asked the wizard, once they were back on the road and the sawhorse had started pulling them at a trot. Well, Ozma planned most of this trip for us, replied Dorothy, and she said we would see the rigmaroles next, and then visit the tin woodmen. That sounds great, said the wizard, but what road do we take to get to the rigmaroles? I don't know for sure exactly, replied Dorothy, but I think it is somewhere just southwest of here. Then why do we need to go all the way back to the crossroads? asked the shaggy man. We might save a lot of time by branching off here and taking a shortcut. But there isn't any path, asserted Uncle Henry. Then I think we should go back to the signposts and make sure we're going the right way, decided Dorothy. They all decidedly moved forward, but after they had gone a short distance, the sawhorse, who had overheard the conversation, stopped and said, Here is a path. Sure enough, a dim path seemed to branch off from the road they were on, and it led across pretty green meadows and past leafy tree groves straight toward the southwest. That looks like a path, and it's going in the right direction, said Ambi Ambi. Why not try it? All right, answered Dorothy. I'm anxious to see what the rigmaroles are like and this path should take us there the quickest. No one made any objection to the plan, so the sawhorse turned into the path, which proved to be nearly as good as all the rest they had been on. At first, they passed a few retired farmhouses, but soon these scattered dwellings were left behind, and only the meadows and the trees were in front of them. They rode along in cheerful contentment until, suddenly, the sawhorse came to an abrupt stop. Pardon me, called the sawhorse. The path has ended, and I would like some advice on the direction you want to go. They looked around, and sure enough, there was no path to be seen. Well, said Dorothy, we're going southwest, and it seems just as easy to follow that direction without a path as with one. Certainly, answered the sawhorse. It's not hard to draw the wagon over the meadow. I only want to know where to go. There's a forest over there across the prairie, said the wizard and it lies in the direction we are going. Please go straight to the forest, and I think we will be all right. So they trotted on again, and the meadow grass was so soft under the wheels that it made riding easy. But Dorothy was a little uneasy about losing the path, because now there was nothing to guide them. Now, no houses could be seen at all, so they could not ask for directions. And although the Land of Oz was always beautiful, Wherever one might go, this part of the country was unfamiliar to everyone. I think we're lost, suggested Aunt Em, after they had proceeded quite a way in silence. Never mind that, said the shaggy man. I've been lost many times. So has Dorothy, and we've always found our way again. But we may get hungry, remarked Omby Amby. That is the worst part about getting lost in a place there are no houses nearby. We had a good dinner last night, said Uncle Henry. We won't starve to death for a long time. No one has ever starved to death in Oz, declared Dorothy positively. But we might get pretty hungry. The wizard said nothing, and he did not seem especially anxious. The sawhorse was trotting along briskly, yet the forest seemed farther away than they had thought when they first saw it. It was nearly sundown when they finally came to the trees. They found themselves in a beautiful place with wide-spreading trees covered with flowering vines and soft moss carpeting the ground around them. A creek with clean, clear water flowed nearby. This will be a good place to camp, said the wizard, as the sawhorse stopped for further instructions. Camp? they all echoed. Of course, asserted the wizard. It will be dark soon, and we cannot travel through this forest at night. Let's camp here. Have some dinner, and sleep until daylight comes again. They all looked at the little man in astonishment, and Aunt Em said, What a beautiful place to camp. I suppose we can sleep under the wagon, and eat grass, 
added Shaggy Man laughing. But Dorothy seemed to have no doubts and was quite cheerful. It's lucky we have the wonderful wizard with us, she said, because he can do almost anything he wants to. Oh yes, I forgot we had a wizard, said Uncle Henry, looking at the little man curiously. I didn't, chirped Belina contently. The wizard smiled and climbed out of the wagon and all the others followed him. In order to camp, he said, the first thing we need are tents. Does anyone have a handkerchief? The shaggy man offered him one, and Aunt Am another. He took them both and laid them carefully on the grass near to the edge of the forest. He laid his own handkerchief down too, and standing a little back from them, he waved his left hand toward the handkerchiefs, and they both turned into two tents big enough for everyone. This one, said the wizard, pointing to the first tent, is for the ladies. Dorothy, you and Aunt Em should take a look inside. Everyone ran to look inside the tent, and they saw two four-post white beds, all ready for Dorothy and Aunt Em. Rugs were spread on the grassy floor, and some camp chairs and a table completed the furniture. Belina had a golden roost pole just above Dorothy's headboard. Well, wow! This beats anything I ever would have expected, exclaimed Aunt Em. And she looked at the wizard almost fearfully, as if he might be dangerous because of his great powers. Oh, Mr. Wizard, how did you manage to do it? asked Dorothy. It's a spell Glinda the Sorceress taught me. She is powerful and an excellent teacher. We have been together a lot lately, and I am learning so fast that I expect to be able to accomplish some really wonderful things in time. You've done it now, declared Dorothy. This is wonderful. We could live here. Just wait until you see the men's tent, said the wizard. They all went excitedly to the second tent and found that it was completely furnished also. It contained four neat beds for Uncle Henry, Ambi Ambi, the Shaggy Man, and the wizard. Also, there was a soft rug for Toto to lie on. The third tent, explained the wizard, is our dining room and kitchen. They visited the dining tent and found a table with plates and silverware as well as all those things necessary to cook. The wizard carried out a big kettle and set it swinging on a crossbar in front of the tent. While he was doing this, Ompy Ambi and the Shaggy Man brought in some wood from the forest, and then they built a fire underneath the kettle. Now, Dorothy, said the wizard smiling, will you cook our dinner? It is simply amazing you were able to produce the furniture and utensils, but there is no food to cook. She replied, confused. Are you sure? inquired the wizard. I don't see anything to put in the pot, and I'm sure it was empty when you brought it out, she replied. Nevertheless, said the little man, winking slyly at Uncle Henry, you will do well to watch this pot and ensure it doesn't boil over. The men took pails into the forest to fetch water from the creek. While they were gone, Aunt Em said to Dorothy, I believe the wizard is fooling us, or has plans for more magic. I saw inside that pot myself, and it was empty. Don't worry, remarked Belina confidently, as she nestled in the grass near the fire. You'll find something in the kettle, and it won't be poor innocent chickens either. The men returned just then with the pails filled with clear, sparkling water. The wizard told Dorothy she was a good cook, and said he thought their supper would be ready. Uncle Henry lifted the kettle from the fire and poured its contents into a big soup bowl the wizard held for him. It filled with a fine, rich stew, steaming hot with many kinds of vegetables and dumplings. The wizard proudly placed the stew on the table in the dining tent, and then all sat down in camp chairs to feast. There were several other dishes on the table, all carefully covered, and when the time came to remove these covers, they found bread and butter, cakes, cheese, pickles, and fruit, including some of the most luscious red strawberries in Oz. No one asked how the wizard made this all happen. They were content by eating heartily the good things provided. Aunt Em leaned back in her chair and offered to do the dishes. That won't be necessary, answered the wizard. The dishes have done themselves. The group were all clearly amazed at this show of great power by the wizard. None were aware of his capabilities until now. The wizard stood, bowed, and accepted everyone's gracious appreciation. Music